so that's really where my focus is, is just, you know, learning from our customers, engaging, um, learning from, you know, prospective customers or, or potentially interested customers about like, what about mining doesn't interest them or what, what's kind of the friction points that makes them not as interested in mining. So um, it re really excited to engage with customers as always and, and looking forward to meeting with them in person. Welcome back to the Compass Mining Podcast. My name is Jarrett, and today I'm joined by Curtis Harris and CJ Burnett, two fellow Compass colleagues. And today we're going to talk about Permissionless 3. It is coming up. By the time you actually hear this, we will all be traveling to Salt Lake City to get ready for the Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday event that's going to be Permissionless 3. So we wanted to kind of hop on today and talk about why we're headed there as Compass Mining and why you should come check out our booth I want to throw it first to Curtis. Curtis, if you could, why should people come by our booth? Well, Jared, thank you for having us. CJ, it's wonderful to be in this, this, this conversation. I think if we recognize the audience of permissionless are, are going to be broad crypto adopters. And what my experience is being deployed out in the field, Jared, is that broad crypto adopters already get Bitcoin. They discovered Bitcoin early, but for whatever reason, they didn't fully go down the Bitcoin rabbit hole and they, they got involved in other projects or using their, their interest in their, their building and they're doing amazing things, but they've always remembered Bitcoin. And what our job is, is to stand there and remind them that actually they can mine Bitcoin, is that they have the opportunity to mine Bitcoin. They can get started with a low MOQ of one miner. And next thing you know, they're deploying Bitcoin into their own pool, their own wallet. So that's actually a story I'm excited for us to tell. And that's why I think you should come by our booth, is that if you have remembered that you don't have enough Bitcoin, let us help you get some more. I love that idea of remembering that you don't have enough Bitcoin. I feel like that's Something that I think about every day. Uh, CJ, you are going to be hopping on a panel, and I believe that's Wednesday, if I'm not wrong. And this is, I should know this, looking at the schedule. It's Wednesday or Thursday. I believe it's Wednesday. Could you remind me of when it is and what your topic is uh, going to be about? Yeah, uh, Wednesday afternoon, uh, going to be on a panel. A really great uh, panel with, with a couple other uh, industry leaders, as well as some uh, uh, at the uh, I believe it's a congressman from um, Utah as well, and, and Lee Bratcher from the Texas Blockchain Council. The focus of that panel is really going to be on the future of mining in the U.S., right? So back in 2021, we saw kind of a mass migration from China with the China mining ban into the U.S. And so for the last three years, it's really been this environment of more and more uh, concentration in the U.S., a lot in Texas and then in other jurisdictions as well. And so really now we have to start thinking about what, what does the future look like? Um, this, this year, obviously, mining and Bitcoin are very hot political topics. It hasn't always been that, mm. that way, but it, it's, you know, I, I think that'll be a heavy focus of the panel is like, you know, what, what are the, the range of outcomes we might expect associated with the election? What are some of the key drivers of, you know, uh, the political landscape or the uh, regulatory or legislative landscape from, um, you know, politicians and others that are actually crafting these legislations? Um, so it'll be really good to see that, that, uh, feedback because we're going to uh, be joined by representatives from Marathon, Clean Spark as well. And it, obviously they have real, given their position in the space, they have a lot of key insight there on, on what, you know, the, the range of outcomes and how they're thinking about it as they allocate their investment dollars from, from their balance sheet. So yeah, it should be really interesting. Obviously that's, that's kind of the acute focus here in 2024, but I think another key thing that they're going to be focused on, <clears throat> on the panel is what is, you know, we just went through the last halving, but now's the time to be thinking about the next halving, right? And what is that, how does that, the economics around the next halving, how does that uh, kind of imply investment decisions over the next two to three years, right? Should mm. we be further allocating time and energy into the U.S. market? Should we be maybe diversifying within the U.S.? There's a lot of obviously uh, diverse states within the U.S., but then also internationally, what does that look like? So I could talk for a while, I'm sure, on, on the panel, but but uh, lots of great topics I'm sure that we'll cover there and excited to dig in with the folks. Let, let me let me hop in and like I'm I'm excited for your enthusiasm. It just you know, CJ, I, I've attended a lot of Bitcoin conferences and the panelists who are, are well prepared, who have thought through the message that they're wanting to bring the audience and to communicate with the other panelists. It is received 
the best. The effort that you put in in advance really pays dividends for the audience. So I, I was pleased to like hear even the, the forethought that you put in. Um, I know when we first started the conversation, we were like, hey, what, what day is it? Um, I'm excited for Permissionless in the conference. So on opening day, um, they have an entire stage dedicated to what they're calling Bitcoin uh, Renaissance. And that's where uh, we are, are coming in. There are also other massive Bitcoin voices that are going to be there. Alex Thorne, who leads Leads, um, uh, Galaxy Digital's firm-wide research is going to be opening that stage. He's really, uh, in addition to being a, a, a battle rapper like myself, uh, uh, he is actually um, a fantastic communicator and speaker. So excited for that. And then you mentioned it. You mentioned in the panelists. So Lee Bratcher moderating. Of course, Lee is the CEO and founder of the Texas Blockchain Council that we're you know, uh, members of, highly supportive of Lee. Great to see. And then the, the two two of the largest miners in the in the world marathon and clean spark and the opportunity to you know engage in thoughtful conversation with them and then the last one that you mentioned but that's where I really want to double down on is the Utah representative Curtis who is uh, joining the panel Yesterday, I was in New York. At, so this was last week. By the time you're listening, I was in New York at Mainnet, and I posted on LinkedIn. I was fired up from Minnesota Representative Tom Emmer, who is also on the Financial um, Services Committee of the House, just like Representative Curtis. So we need to make sure that Representative Curtis hears from us the powerhouse of legislative awareness, and like that Tom is a champion, and to do everything he can to get beside Tom. So I'm extremely extremely excited for opening day and the whole the whole stage the bitcoin uh, renaissance but Jarrett, i talked for a while let's throw it to you you're you're looking forward to permissionless Jarrett, you've been there before I, this is my this is my first time what are you excited about permissionless i know that you have your own approach you lead media you lead content you'll probably be at the booth what what are you looking forward forward to Jarrett? Yeah, it was actually last September of 2023, they had Permissionless 2, which was in Austin. I attended that at the time with a podcast, a group podcast I was with. Uh, we kind of went together. And that's actually where you and I were able to meet. You were, I think you had some business in Dallas and you were coming up and you were nice enough. And you and I were able to get some tacos and chat because I just joined the Compass team literally weeks before. Permissionless is different. If you're listening to this and you're a Bitcoiner or a Bitcoin miner, permissionless is a little bit different because it's more maybe crypto than Bitcoin, if that makes sense. So that in, in that sense, I'm really excited for Compass to be there, to not only be representing Bitcoin, as you called out earlier, Curtis, like, hey, if you have that voice in the back of your head, that's like, maybe I don't have enough Bitcoin, you know, come and see us. And then we are representing Bitcoin mining at Permissionless, as CJ's just called out. We won't be the only ones, but we may be the only ones with a booth. I actually don't know that for sure. But in my mind's eye, thinking back to Permissionless and consensus that's put on my coin desk and some of the other more crypto focused, less maybe Bitcoin focused events, it certainly seems like we're going to be maybe one of the only Bitcoin miners there, which is just going to be great. And so the things that I'm really looking forward to is connecting with other content creators that are maybe outside of the Bitcoin, of the Bitcoin ecosystem. And I almost said the echo chamber, because sometimes it can be that from a media standpoint. If you're listening to this podcast, you probably listen to the same other podcast that Curtis and CJ and I listen to that have to do with Bitcoin. So we're all kind of hearing the same things. And I think one of the things that I would like to do as we break into Q4, which we're stepping into October, and then we have Bulvember, and then Pump Sember. I just learned about these things. As we step into these things, and then we get into 2025, we're all very hopeful and bullish and feeling positive that, hey, we're going to see some price appreciation. Hash price is going to go up. The attention will come back. The MOQ of one is really going to be an incentive for people that it, maybe they have Ethereum, and maybe that's gone up a bunch, and they're like, you know, I really do need to get the OG coin here, right? As some of my friends in the Bitcoin say, the original meme coin, right? the one that's memeing the banks and the TradFi systems. So I think it's going to be a great opportunity for Compass Mining to kind of step in, wave the Bitcoin flag, wave the Bitcoin mining flag, hope we get some attention. But what I'm really hoping to do, I'll finally get to the answer to the question here is connect with other uh, content creators, podcasters who are from more crypto focused, see if I can step into their ecosystem, share a little bit about Bitcoin and obviously Bitcoin mining and what we're doing at Compass and see if I can bring some people over maybe on, on, on onto this team and, and bring some economic energy towards what we're doing. Because as we know, Bitcoin mining is not going anywhere. It's going to continue to grow. And I think if you're in crypto, you're actually not a real crypto investor. Even if you're just in the meme coins or you're just staking, you're actually not a real 
crypto investor until you have exposure to Bitcoin and then exposure to hash rate. Because at the end of the day, the hash rate is the thing that mixes the real world value of the energy and the hardware with the digital value and the and the overall global network. So that's what I'm personally looking forward to. If you, too. So if you're listening to this and you run media or you're like, hey, I listen to your podcast, Jarrett, and I, I loved Curtis's question and I want to introduce you to this crypto content creator out of so-and-so. It doesn't even need to be US based. We have the power of the internet. So that's what I'm kind of really looking forward to. Um, and now, Curtis, I'm going to, you know, pickleball the ball back over the net. Can I ask you? Can I can I ask you a question? You, you, you can, but I'm going to make you tap the brakes because my goodness, that was a resounding answer. Like I'm literally excited. Like the bullish case for Bitcoin, you really just lit that on fire. I, Jared, I think that you've got a really unique opportunity to do exactly that. You get to go stand in this massive room full of crypto enthusiasts and be the Bitcoiner and have the opportunity to share the Bitcoin message from your unique perspective, leading media for one of the massive brands in Bitcoin. I think it is phenomenal for you to be in the room. I know so there, because I've had the opportunity to see the booth layout, I know that, that our booth number 1210 is next to Kraken and in front of the climbing wall, but just opposite Kraken's large booth is the podcast studio. And what I was envisioning is us getting like a cardboard sign that is like, you know, we'll podcast for likes and attention is that we want to be able to share our story. What you just did there was phenomenal. You are 100% going to be able to plug in with other media communicators across the crypto crypto ecosystem, and you're going to do a phenomenal job of communicating the Bitcoin message. That was extremely well done. All right, you tap the brakes. I've got I've got a big reveal. I want to I want to say that, but I on this podcast, I'm going to reveal a piece of Compass merch that's coming to Permissionless. So we've got uh, hot things coming, but uh, uh, you're back, back at you, Pickleball, Jarrett. Yeah, so I'm going to Pickleball back over the net to you. So I just kind of shared my vision from a media standpoint and, you know, getting into other ecosystems that maybe aren't Bitcoin. And also if there are Bitcoiners there, like let's bring them over to the booth. I'm going to have microphones. We're going to try to get as much short form content as we can. Uh, for you, Curtis, business development wise and marketing, maybe a focus on the business development. Where are you seeing opportunities at Permissionless? Uh, we're, we're into Q4. This is more crypto focused. That maybe doesn't matter. How are you thinking about permissionless? You, you, the, the, you and I are thinking just uh, spot on. Whereas you were were wanting to bring the question to me, CJ is a big part of what what I think the answer is. So let me let me lay some groundwork and then frame it, and we'll give the the, the same question for. Uh, for CJ. Um, uh, Jared, the reason that I believe Compass Mining is going to permissionless is so that we can stand in front of our traditional retail customer. So there's someone who's found Bitcoin and now they're looking for unique ways to get access to Bitcoin. And often mining Bitcoin can create the lowest cost um, you know, to acquire, to acquire Bitcoin. So we want to stand there and tell that story about how easy it is to get mining Bitcoin. We actually have an incredible turn product that is doing exceptionally well online and mining within 48 hours. Um, so that's the reason that I'm excited to be going to permissionless. But the reason I wanted to kick that to CJ is here's my experience is that uh, I'm out in the booth and I, 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 I get hands on when I'm able to step back and see big picture. So CJ leads uh, all of revenue for Compass. He really has his heart for the economic welfare of our customer. The, the retail product that we have is just something that we're massive champions of. And I wanted to give CJ a chance to like talk to our retail customer that we don't usually get a chance to stand in front of when we're sharing this message. CJ, any, any thoughts? on that? Yeah, happy to. So, you know, one of the things I've said it before, I'll say it again, you know, one of the things that we've learned over the years is, is everybody mines Bitcoin for their own reasons, right? So, mm -hmm. Some it's just a, you know, DCA into into more Bitcoin, some it's, you know, to generate a fiat profit, maybe others, it's to drive down their tax burden, right, kind of maybe do some trading on the ASIC side to, to offset, you know, some tax liability, things like that. Um, you know, we we've, spend a lot of time and energy building the products that we have in order to make it attractive to all of those customers, right? So, you know, I, I don't think we can necessarily like uh, put a, you know, uh, assign a value system or assign a, like an objective to our customers because each one has their own own goals, right? Um, but but that really is the, the point of us being at Permissionless. We recognize 
this is a, a crypto, you know, Bitcoin native group that understands the value of digital assets and wants to be more and more involved in the ecosystem. So, you know, that's really our, our focus is, is, hey, you know, putting putting ourselves in, a, in front of a group that we haven't necessarily engaged with much in the past, right? And saying, hey, you know, this is something that B Bitcoin is becoming more and more sexy again, right? You've got, obviously, with the ETFs and things like that. And so it's just reminding those groups, hey, you know, we're we're here like this is a this is an offering that allows you to get more and more exposure to digital assets in, in a little bit of a unique maybe tax advantaged way um you know one of the other things that that i i think i would mention is that um you know it, there's a lot of i i think there's a lot of uh crossover between the interests, not necessarily focused on a retail customers, but there's a lot of crossover and interest between people that are in the crypto ecosystem and those that are interested in HPC and AI. And yep. there um, is a very clear uh, marriage or, or very clear interaction between the need for digital or excuse me, the need for uh, uh, power infrastructure, electrical infrastructure between those groups, right? So being in the same room as, as those that are really focused on projects that are, how do we bring more and more power online to, you know, service both of these groups, right? Bitcoin mining can be a very interesting kind of a short, even like a short term solution for groups that maybe have a long lead time on, on power infrastructure. They can energize capacity quickly that might take longer to you know, turn into like a traditional data center for HPC or, or others. So, you know, I, I think there's a lot of value in being in that in that room because we can we can have those conversations with hey somebody that has you know infrastructure that they're trying to monetize in some way compass can help you with that right um uh, <clears throat> or 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 retail customers like hey I'm, I'm learning about Bitcoin again or I'm interested in mining or or like how is mining or how is bitcoin different from all, all these other meme coins and, and digital assets that i that i hear about maybe at this conference and so i think there's a very clear reason why why permissionless is having a bitcoin renaissance day or focus right or track if you will um is because there's clearly a uh, a renewed interest from call it tradfi and others with the institutionalization of bitcoin um that that really drives a lot of of focus and demand and interest from the retail cohort again mm. Jerry, you you raised the point earlier and i just wanted to confirm it from my um, all the visibility that i've had arranging our um you know, details for going to permissionless, we are going to be the only Bitcoin miner who's exhibiting there. I think it is just an amazing place for us to, to stand. And CJ's point around um, not just our traditional retail, but uh, the entire overall ecosystem of AI, ML, and the massive draw for compute and the opportunity that we we have to, you know, educate and to be a resource. What 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 phenomenal things. Um, I, I shared earlier that um, I had a reveal and you asked about the booth. So I'm planning on being at our booth for the majority of the conference. It's a three day conference. I, there's several talks that I do want to catch, but I'm, I'm very optimistic to meet everyone who's attending permissionless. And we did, uh, um, um, bring out a special, so I'm not going to announce it live here. You've got to be at permissionless, but we've got a, a, a customer incentive for, uh, uh, new customers. And that brings me to a point that I wanted to share something, uh, just a really phenomenal statistic that we're really just starting to get our arms around. In the last six months, so looking back for the last six months, new customers, so customers who are brand new to our platform, 18% of new customers in the last six months are, have made a repeat purchase within the first week. Our turnkey miner product is winning hearts and minds in the world of Bitcoin. So the opportunity to stand there permissionless, to purchase a miner, to have it online and hashing to your pool within 48 hours, you're going to have an amazing experience. So we want to stand there and physically have that conversation and make sure you're, you're fully comfortable. And because we know you need swag at conferences, we've got a brand new uh, black and white with the Compass logo trucker hat. So uh, stop by Compass booth 1210 and you can talk to Jarrett, you can talk to CJ, but if you want a hat, you better come and talk to Curtis. I love the drop. I was, I, I, I didn't know what the swag was going to be and I love that. And I don't know if you saw 
the GIF or GIF, I never know how to pronounce that, that we created with Anthony and Bryce where they're putting on their hats. I don't know if you saw that, but you just became a GIF or a GIF. Once again, I don't know how to pronounce that. So uh, thank you, Curtis, for that. <laughs> That's going to be shared on our Twitter. So, okay, if they come by 1210, they just need to talk to Curtis and then they can get a trucker hat. Now, just like Bitcoin is a limited amount of 21 million, is there a limited amount of trucker hats? Like, can we create some scarcity and buy that urgency? Yes, yes, there, there, there is. Uh, in, in fact, we have uh, we have some T-shirts and stickers and magnets and hats as well. So enough merchandise to uh, warrant you you coming by and having a purposeful, engaging conversation. Jared, we actually have a, a, a large uh, cross section of our team coming. So what that allows us to do is to be able to have a purposeful conversation with whoever's stopping by. So if you're simply there for Bitcoin all of us are going to be able to be, you know, a, a good point of contact. We're all knowledgeable with our core products and how easy it is to get online and mining Bitcoin. But if you're more focused on larger volume hardware sales, Doug, our, our head of sales is going to be there as well as Adam, who is a, a sales executive on the team. So like literally we've got top notch people there able to have detailed conversations. Heather, who is part of managed services where we build and develop sites. We help people operate their own capacity. And then Vishnu and Karu, Vishnu and Karun both work in different different departments. Vishnu leads uh, logistics, so global logistics for Compass. If you're not aware, there is constantly a truck or a ship moving that's moving customer units. So uh, Vishnu is incredibly um, uh, dialed in, and Karun, who is a uh, head of hosting. So if you're if if you have a hosting relationship with us, uh, Karun is involved in that. He is an excellent, knowledgeable person to stand there and talk to about our all of our large scale hosting operations, as well as the us three handsome gentlemen. So a large team coming and we're, we're excited to be there, Jared. Yeah. And I'm glad you called out Vishnu. I'm, I'm excited that Vishnu is going to be there. A Vishnu runs logistics, as you just called out. And by the time you're listening to this, which will be the Tuesday right before permissionless, we will have launched a check-in where we're going to actually talk about how the port strike may or may not impact Bitcoin mining. Um, that's now been going on for a week by the time you hear this. And I think it's something to keep in mind because as we've seen with the pandemic, it's really important to understand how the macro events can impact local supply chains. And so Vishnu mm. and I are going to be hopping on a check-in and talking about that. Check-ins are, you know, short format content about 10 minutes, but will be informative. And if you are mining Bitcoin or you're thinking about mining Bitcoin, it's going to be interesting to see uh, and to check in on that conversation. We're kind of coming up here on time. So what I want to do is give both of you uh, a, a chance to maybe share the, the the 30 second reason why someone should want to come by our booth and you can even speak to a specific audience. For example, I can start and I'll lead the way here. If you run a crypto content, whether it's a TikTok and you have a couple hundred followers or you've got a podcast that's up and running and it's in another country that's outside the U.S., and you would like to collaborate with us. We are a Bitcoin mining company. We have a very large footprint on social media. So if you get to create content with us and we get to share it, it's not a bad thing. A uh, rising tide lifts all boats. So if you're hearing that and you want to create content and you want to collaborate with me specifically, please drop by booth 1210. I will be there. I don't know if I'm going to be giving swag away. I don't know if I'll be that cool, but I will be there and have mics and ready to record. Uh, Curtis, I'm going to throw it to you. Well, that's that's wonderful. Yes, Jared, you you are you are blessed to uh, to, to to give swag away. Um, uh, of course, I was teasing that they they had to stop by and see me. So, uh, I think that my experience going to a lot of conferences is that the people who are there who are exhibiting they want to share their message. And what happens is people will will walk by the booth. They're they're quickly just trying to see is there something here that's interesting to me and if so maybe I'll stop and read and then even fewer of those will, will take the time to like step up and engage so tying together a couple points from earlier I do think that we're going to stand out as the only Bitcoin miners in the group and possibly the only you know direct Bitcoin mining company there's several Bitcoin adjacent and people who are building on Bitcoin but I think we could um, be carrying the large Bitcoin flag and to that point when we had a chance to design our booth where there there was a, a a plaque that we could put up at the top of the booth and what we decided to do was to use the bitcoin logo so kind of like the bat signal we want that bitcoin logo to just be standing out so 
when you're walking by the booth, we're going to stand out as unique and we want you to engage with us. But then I need to put the ownership on the Compass team from that perspective is that we can't just stand behind the booth and hope you come up and talk to us. We actually need to take advantage that you went through the hard effort to get yourself to permissionless. You're in Salt Lake, you're checked into the hotel, you got your badge, you're walking around. It is now my job to step up and say, hi, I'm Curtis. I'm with Compass. Can I tell you about mining Bitcoin? You know, when I think of doing a booth at a conference, right? The, the primary purpose is to engage with our customers. Uh, you know, we, we want to hear, you know, maybe you're a current customer. We want to hear about your experience, how we can improve. Um, you know, that's, that's a constant effort, right? We always need to be improving our platform, improving our product and improving the service to you in order to, you know, just make an outstanding a product for other you to benefit from, but then others to benefit from as well. Um, so that's really, really my core focus, right? Engaging with customers, understanding their pain points, understanding why, why aren't they interested in mining? Potentially, right? Like, well, what's kind of the hurdles? So, you know, I, I think it's constantly thinking and learning about how do we lower the the hurdles to getting into mining or learning about mining. Um, so that's really where my focus is: is just you know learning from our customers, engaging, um, learning from you know prospective customers or, or potentially interested customers about like what about mining doesn't interest them or what what's kind of the friction points that makes them not as interested in mining. So, um, it re really excited to engage with customers as always and and looking forward to meeting with them in person. CJ, that was super well said. And I think that that is something that everyone in Compass, all the teammates, Curtis, that you listed out that are going to be present, we're constantly thinking about how do we reduce friction and increase efficiency for our customer experience. And there's nothing better than just to engage. I know when I was at Bitcoin Nashville, I was able to engage with a couple of customers and just learn a lot. Uh, sometimes in the in the virtual space, we we, we kind of miss that IRL. So I'm personally excited to do that and be at the booth. Um, I want to thank you guys for hopping on today. It's going to be exciting for us to be at Permissionless. And by the time this drops, we're all going to be on planes, headed to Salt Lake City, getting ready, as Curtis said, to check into the hotel and grab our badges. If you're listening to this on YouTube, please go ahead and subscribe. If you're listening to this on a podcast platform, go ahead and subscribe. Make sure you find Curtis at the uh, you know, at our booth or just around permissionless. Apparently he'll be walking around with a bag of hats um, follow us on, let's see, social media is uh, X, LinkedIn and YouTube at Compass Mining. And we will see you at booth 1210 in Salt Lake City. Curtis and CJ, thanks so much for uh, stopping by here. Thank you, CJ. Thank you, Jared. This was great. Yeah, thanks for having us. 